Today's episode of Discovering Doctor Who is brought to you by the letter C for Charlie. He's the best dog in the world. Mwah. to a brand new episode of Discovering Doctor Who. Today is episode 31, and the Doctor Who episode I'm going to be talking about is Utopia, part one of the three-part finale for season or uh, series three of the new Doctor Who. And oh, it was... Well, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to give my full thoughts on it yet, obviously. But it's 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 an episode I'm kind of conflicted on because I will say I liked it, but it did have some issues that are it's it's but they're bugging me more than they should. I think. But that aside, uh, let me get into the parts about this episode that I really enjoyed. Uh, the first of which is the return of Captain Jack Harkness. I really enjoy his character. I enjoyed him from the first season, and uh, I believe uh, the show Torchwood had its first season taking place uh, basically at the same time that uh, this show was taking place, which is, I guess, about the time that Jack comes in. Or maybe it starts after this one. I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah, it was just a uh, really um, good to see him, and the way that he's reintroduced or, or brought back in with the Doctor seeing him, and then just kind of hurrying off and starting the TARDIS up, and then Jack grabs on to the TARDIS and just screaming "Doctor!" as they're going through the time vortex. It was that that was just a lot of fun, and it really made me laugh when I saw that part. Uh, even though there's the danger of the captain dying, being exposed to all that, obviously. But when I when I saw it, it was really funny, and I really liked that part. Now, the second part about this episode that I really liked was... Um, it, and it, it, this one might seem kind of strange, but it was a particular question. I'm sort of paraphrasing the question, but uh, does the Doctor tire of his companions and it's sort of a subject brought up uh, when Jack is talking to Martha and uh, I think it's Martha that asks like does he just do you just get uh, tired of your companions and leave them behind and Jack says well not if you're blonde referring to Rose obviously but it, I just thought that was a really interesting question and I mean it's obvious that the doctor does care about his companions, uh, based on the ones that I've seen so far, based on uh, his interactions with Sarah Jane, like even though you know she was left behind back in the classic uh, age of the show, um, it's like you know, it is it, and again, it's like I haven't seen any of the classic episodes, so I don't know the reasoning for those companions leaving. But is it possibly that he kind of gets? tired of them or he grows bored with them I just and and uh, you know uh, all you commenters out there if you'd like to clarify that if you have some insight to that I'd really appreciate it because like I said it's obvious that he cares about his companions but does it kind of reach a point where he gets bored of them eh, I don't know honestly I, I'm obviously still brand new to the show brand new to the series so please uh, give some insight to that if you have any uh, yeah, but I really, like I said, that, that part, that question really intrigued me, so it was like a part of the episode I really liked. Now, the third best part about this episode, in my opinion, the drums. The drums that the professor kept hearing. It was just so... it, it had this very foreboding effect, and I honestly had no idea what it could be. Like, what are those drums? Why does he keep hearing those? Why is he only person being affected by that and I thought you know maybe he's really sick maybe he has this horrible disease like maybe maybe he had a tumor maybe he has a tumor you know something that's slowly killing him and it's affecting his psyche that was something 
that I honestly thought was going on. And that just really pulled me into this episode. I, I mean, one of many uh, parts of it, really. And, there, and honestly, there's a lot about this episode that like I felt was really good. That I'm not focusing on them here because they're not like my favorite parts of the episode, obviously. But like that was just one part of it that really, I, I feel like, sort of pulled me in and uh, brought me to like the character of the Professor. Which brings me to my final and probably the, the most important part about this episode that I really liked. And let me just say, I knew it. Part of me, just from what I've heard about this show in the past, and one of the particular enemies of the Doctor, I knew it. The final best part about this episode, in my opinion, the Master Reveal. That whole segment, just the change that occurred from... You know, the entire rest, like the first half of the episode, or the first three-fourths of the episode, really, when we just, you know, we're getting to know the professor, and he's a legitimately nice guy. He's like a very caring individual. And then the fob watch. The fob watch is open, much like in Human Nature, well, the two-part before, uh, Human Nature and the Family of Blood. And the master is brought out. And uh, kudos to the actor. Like, I didn't write down his name. I can't remember it, but it's like I thought that he did an amazing transition from this wonderful, very nice, you know, seemingly sick man to just this dark, evil presence that just oh, I I absolutely love that. And I mean, obviously, you know, the master's a bad guy, but just that entire aspect and getting to see just a, a, a sample because I, again I haven't seen the classic series so I don't know what the master has been like in the past but just that evilness and even when he transitioned and like he regenerated when he was hurt and he became his younger self just both actors did an, a really good job just portraying this just really evil person, this completely self-absorbed, kind of funny, but in a horrible way character. I just really like that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, all that aside, and again, like I said, there are a lot of aspects of this episode I really enjoyed. So overall, like, you know, I'm, I'm leaning toward the positive with this episode, but there are three things, that, like I mentioned before, are bugging me more than I feel like they should, but there are parts that just really hurt my view of this episode for some reason, and I'll get into it here, obviously. So, uh, one of my first annoyance with this episode, the future kind. And I get it that, you know, this is the far future, and there's sort of a, I guess, mutation of the human race at that time. Was it the year 100 trillion? end of the universe, literally, but in a way the future kind felt unnecessary, like they were just sort of a, well we need somebody to be the bad guys or something to be feared in this episode, so they just created these characters, and, it's like, and that's not even necessarily a bad thing, but the way they looked was just ridiculous, that's my cat, Bella. But, it's just like the razor teeth, and I don't know, at first I thought like there was a type of vampire, because I kept avoiding the light, or at least it seemed that way to me, but then you just find out later that they're just a, like a sort of mutation of the humans at that point, and I don't know, just there was so much about them that just felt unnecessary and very boring. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, it just, uh, the future kind really bothered me. And again, they just, it felt unnecessary. And the teeth, just something about the, like, the razor teeth, like, the shark's teeth, basically, just seemed pointless. 
uh, up until the very end when the master lets the future kind in, and then they're actually, you know, a threat to the doctor and Jack. Well, Jack, except for the fact that he's immortal, <laughs> and Martha. And so, yeah, I don't know. That was just. I, I just don't like them. I didn't like the future kind. And best I can tell, they're not going to serve any other purpose to this show ever. Unless, for some reason, they go back to the year 100 trillion or even around that, that time period. I have no idea. But yeah, the first annoyance, and I kind of rambled on for that one for a while. Uh, the second annoyance I had with this episode... Oh, and this one is admittedly very minor, but uh, Chen Tho's accent, so to speak. And, and the, I really, I like the character. The character is very sweet, and it's a very enjoyable character. And she had some dynamics to her that I really enjoyed. We get to know more about her in this episode, but uh, admittedly. The whole starting every sentence with Chan and ending every sentence with Tho got really annoying, at least for me. And again, I know that's, that's part of her alien culture. She's the last one of her kind. Thank goodness there weren't more of them, otherwise I probably would have shoved a pencil in my ear. But yeah, just for some reason that whole little accent, or whatever you want to call it, just really got on my nerves. But besides that, I really liked her character, and she was very cute. I thought it was adorable when um, uh, she, she when she was talking with Martha, and there was one time where she didn't use the Chan Tho in a sentence, and she just giggled, and that was adorable, and I love that. But then the rest of the episode where she kept saying it, it's just eventually it got annoying and old. And I, 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 again, that's just me. It's it bothers me more than it should, I think. But you know, that's just the way it is. And it's just a minor thing overall. And then the third and final issue I had with this episode, or my annoyance with this episode, is the fact that we find out that the Doctor has a problem with Jack's apparent immortality. And that's the reason why we find out uh, the Doctor left him in the, well, in the time period that he did <clears throat> when Rose brought him back to life, when she absorbed the Time Vortex, uh, well, when she became Bad Wolf. Um, that's the reason why the Doctor was trying to run away when, at the beginning of the episode when Jack found them. And I, don't know, I just find it extremely hypocritical that the Doctor has met all of these different beings that live for such long periods. Like, the, the face of Bo supposedly has been alive for, what was it, thousands, possibly, I, I think it might have been millions of years. Um, the Doctor himself is over 900 years old, supposedly. Um, who knows the actual, you know, lifespan of Time Lords. I'm not sure if that's ever really mentioned, but obviously they live for very, very long periods of time. So why is it that, uh, you know, a being is, you know, immortal, and I can understand that it might be, you know, wrong, or there might the Doctor might have an issue with it, but... I don't know, I just find the way he reacts to it very hypocritical, and, and I have an issue with that, admittedly. But, again, overall, it's like, you know, uh, those parts bother me probably more than they should, but they do bother me, and they are, you know, obviously issues I had with this episode. But, moving on from that, I want to hit on my favorite quote of this episode. And it's a conversation between the doctor and the professor. And it's nothing really, like, it's nothing uh, grand. It's just something that really made me laugh because the doctor is good at that. But the quote is this, uh, uh, and I'll point this way when it's the doctor, this way when it's the professor. The doctor says, I'm a bit of a hermit, really. A hermit with friends? Hmm, hermits united. We get together every 10 years and swap stories about caves. It's good fun. For Hermit. 
I, I, I don't know why. That was just a funny moment, a really silly moment that I just really enjoyed, and I like that. I know that there are probably a lot more better quotes to this episode, really, but, you know, that was just the one that really did the job for me in the end, and it's, it's one that I really liked. Now, again, overall, I really liked this episode. I thought it was, um, it, le it left on a great cliffhanger, uh, you know, with the, uh, the doctor, I was gonna say Rose, with doc the doctor, Martha, and Jack uh, being surrounded. The master has left them behind. He took the TARDIS. What's going to happen? And really, that's that's my question for this episode. It's like, you know, how are they going to get out of it? I'm really interested to see the next episode and see how they get out of that situation. And overall, I really did like this episode, but it did have some issues that I just couldn't look past. I said it over and over again, you know, I probably dislike it more than I should, but, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, and everyone, thank you very much for watching this episode. I, uh, you know, I'm just gonna get right into it. I'm gonna get watching the next, uh, episodes. The two-parter will be, um, I believe, The Sound of the Drums, and I don't remember the other one. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's gonna be the final two episodes of this season, parts two and three of the finale, and I'll see you all next time on the next Discovering Doctor Who. And this is my boy Charlie, he's such a good doggy. He's a good doggy, and I disturb his sleep. Oh, sorry, buddy.